podcast episode new year it is the redley fretcher cast coming to you from the year 2020 is that how everyone's saying it 2020 yes, yes. mainly 2020 uh, ah i'm wrong not in english yeah. but yes the the numbers are correct thank you hickey i appreciate your your uh your accurate math <laughs> the math checks out this is anime episode 65 Witch Hunter Robin. All right. The far off year of 2002. Mm. There's two zeros and two zeros in there. 2020. All right. I'm JD. I'm your host. I'm trying to make bad jokes. Colin, you've made it to this podcast episode as a special guest, coming all the way from the Retro Gaming Podcast. Yep. And the Great White North. Yes, Canada does still exist. It is not on fire, unlike another podcast host in which his entire country is on fire. But Tori, yours is covered in ice. How are you doing? Mine is not covered in ice, but uh, sure. Yeah, it is. I'm. I'm doing. No, it is not. <laughs> We've surprisingly had fucking uh, record heat here, so I am not. Uh-huh. I'm not is freezing. It, I'm not freezing to death. Slowly going to come on fire too. No, it's nowhere near, near coming on fire. It's just unusually warm. Yeah, it's about the same here. Not much snow on the ground. Maybe it's because an entire country is on fire, and it's heating up the rest of the earth. I <laughs> doubt it, but yeah, sure. Let's definitely go with that. We're going to go with that. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a weather person. I don't know. Clearly. Yeah, it's not just one country <laughs> on fire. <laughs> California is going up in flames, too, in more ways than one. Mm, but do people care? Well, well, it is they, California. Well, people are moving sure, out in droves, care. so maybe. Oh, nobody cares. Nobody cares about California? Okay. We're on that <laughs> bandwagon. <laughs> Hickey, all the way from the Amazon jungle. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. Thank you. <laughs> you you, <laughs> miscalculated, about one. you miscalculated where I am. For like I don't know a hundred thousand kilometers, but that's that's okay. <laughs> Missed by a bit. Yeah, just <laughs> just the the whole country, but it, it's fine. The swamps of the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> that that's right. There you go. Nailed it. Nailed it. I'm so good at geography. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please. Uh, at, at, we got at least get the right continent. <laughs> <laughs> all right fine in mexico there you go yeah, yeah. mexico where the mouth of the danube river meets <laughs> that's good uh, enough good enough tori just go climb to mount everest we'll be all good now i no, but okay <laughs> <laughs> ah tori you got a you got a uh, your plan to watch cleaning quest. JD, that's me. Hickey, that's you over there in the Amazon jungle. That's on the next to the Nile. Uh, we got a manga <laughs> manhwa webtoon checkout thing. We got a topic pacing in anime. How appropriate. Mm-hmm. It's almost like it was planned. It's yeah, weird, right? <laughs> and we finish out with our retro review, Witch Hunter Robin. Tons of energy coming from this JD, podcast. JD, it's not retro. It's from 2002. 
Yeah, dude, dude, it is it's, it's on the chip almost thousand. 18 years old now. <laughs> God damn. Oh, yeah, it's 2020. I forgot about that. It's, it's more than twice my age. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> More than ding, twice ding. half my age at the time. <laughs> it's yes. more than twice my <laughs> age. All right. Okay. Whoa. Hold up. I didn't know Canadians <laughs> aged backwards. <laughs> <laughs> There's some serious reveals going on here. Mm-hmm. I totally <laughs> fucked that up. <laughs> I mean, he, he might be just Benjamin Button all the way. You know. <laughs> yeah, but he's still 52, even though he looks two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same, same shit the lolly guys say. Sure. <laughs> what I meant to say is that I was 14 when it came out, and it's eight. The anime is 18 years old now, so oh, shit. That was yeah. The math, the math does not uh, <laughs> does not add old. up there. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, sounded way better in my head. <laughs> it always does. Uh all right. How's ever? How's everyone's? How did everyone's Christmas, New Year's it's been? It's been a. It's been a day or two since the last podcast episode. <laughs> yeah. So who are you asking? I don't care. Just someone speak. I'll go. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Stepping up like the like the not man you are, the nine year old Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I said it on the retro cast, but I'll, or the the retro gaming cast, but I'll say it here. We had. Dutch Christmas this year, just because of everybody's schedule. We we celebrated early. Dutch Christmas is normally on the fifth, but we moved it to the weekend of that week. So it was pretty good. Just spent time with my family, my parents, my brother, and his family. We all we all gave gifts. I got myself. I got a double Blu-ray of Batman Mask of the Phantasm and Batman Sub-Zero. And along with that, I got a, a book by Colin Mockery. So that was that was a pretty nice the gift. Whose line is it anyway, guy? Yep. Same oh. guy. Also Canadian. <laughs> yep. Just like Alex Trebek. He's Canadian. Damn right. Yeah. Famous Canadians out there. Ryan Gosling, Ryan Reynolds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nathan Just Fillion. Just because everyone in Canada is named Ryan doesn't mean they're they're famous. Come on. Nathan Fillion? You mean Ryan Fillion. <laughs> yeah, I guess I've been getting my wrong, my name wrong this whole time. <clears throat> well, you go by your middle name. <laughs> Got me there. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty good Christmas. And what did you do on the 25th? Um, we had a f- had some other family over and just did some of the regular celebrations. Had turkey for dinner. Uh, normal Canadian Christmas. How boring. Ha. Huh. Everyone gets maple syrup and all dressed chips, which, by the way, <laughs> I have found in grocery stores in Rhode Island, and I proceeded to buy all six bags that were on the shelf. <laughs> it was Good amazing. Man. I, by definition, marked out. I see that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I bought that on uh, New Year's Eve, and then Mom and I went to a wrestling show on New Year's Eve, and oh, yeah. that uh, one, uh, a single all dress trips bag didn't even make it the hour drive to get there. <laughs> it was gone immediately. So good. <laughs> Loved. I love all dress chips. I love Canadian chips it's one of the best things about canada you guys know your chips <laughs> know your chip flavors <clears throat> i have yet to even Corey. try them because i'm a picky bastard <laughs> well colin until you have all dressed chips you're not actually canadian and i'm rescinding your name ryan <laughs> okay <laughs> fine no skin off my nose <laughs> no wait i'm, I'm not a- familiar with this phrase as in, it doesn't affect me at all. Oh, water off a duck. Gotcha. Essentially. Okay. Tori. Me. Yes. Yes. Did you pass all your exams, you fool? Uh, as far as I'm aware, I still need to get two more grades back, which is going to happen hopefully this month. And uh, Hopefully? Yeah, I don't know. What, do you got to, like, gank the teacher or something? <laughs> I don't even grade? know who I have to gank. It's secret. <laughs> That's the problem with exams. <laughs> 
You don't know who's in charge of fucking grading your, your exam. Well, how are you supposed to properly bribe a teacher if you don't know who it is? Well, that's kind of the point. You're not supposed to. You're <laughs> well, supposed to make that shit. impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's fucked up, but that's the, that's what they're doing. <laughs> so you're telling me you have to actually know the material going into the test? Yes. Oh, this country's so backwards. I know. <laughs> Disgusting. I thought I would have been able to bribe them anyways. Fucking what I bribed them with. The fucking here's a pack of gum. A half a pack of gum, I guess. Here's a pack. Yeah, you don't wanna you don't want their ego to go up. Here's make a make pack. it seem like they have the advantage. Here's the pack of gum. Oh whoops, I dropped my condoms. <laughs> hey, don't be ridiculous. I can't afford condoms. Oh, I'm sorry for you. He can only afford Milky Way wrappers. Half used. Oh jeez. <laughs> Uh, I hear I hear those aren't very effective. Strange. Ah, oh, you're right. Snickers are way better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, always go with the Snickers. Snickers satisfies, as they say. They indeed do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope that so. Is, that is quite their tagline. Yeah. Uh, th thank you. Thank you for pointing out the joke. I'm glad. Yeah. This Snickers, is why you're here. Sponsor us. This is, this yeah. is why we're always... <laughs> yeah, Snickers sponsor us, definitely. This is a glowing promotion. <laughs> we recommend uh, use Snickers wrappers, not over Milky Way, for condoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't uh, even have can... Milky Ways up here in the Great White North. <laughs> so Snickers you can't have Milky better. Ways in Canada? No, we don't. We just have Mars bars. Ah, oh, that's okay. Ah, you're Mars not bars anything. and Snickers. Yeah. Quicks us the best candy bar anyway, so that's that's okay. Yeah, oh, we got those two. Man, good. That that I don't see the problem. <laughs> uh, Hickey, did you uh, throw th uh, pull some steel on some of your clients? What, what's going on? No. What did you do Christmas, New Year's? Uh, I mean, no, no. I mean, did you not, fucking do not it? Yet. I will do it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Nothing happened on Christmas, but my 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 New Year's up to, to today <laughs> was uh, quite eventful. Starting with my New Year's, where I got drunk and got also hit in the back by a misfire firework. Uh, I'm okay. I just got a porn on my back. Looks like someone hit me with a cigarette. It's it's okay. I checked with <laughs> paramedics. Uh, it was fun, actually. <laughs> it was the best New Year's I had in a while. Uh, <laughs> then, you know, nothing really happened in the week. I was on recess. Uh, I started watching some streamers trying to beat Ghouls and Ghosts, which is a game JD played a while back. Yeah, he I was did, in voice yes. chat. I was in the voice chat trying to help him pass the game because JD doesn't know how to <laughs> read manuals or instructions at all. Uh, so <laughs> I was just uh, helping him. I saw on YouTube some people streaming, and I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm gonna watch it." Game's hard as shit. Oh, well, he's just he's just he leaving. Was he was taken from us. Somebody needed something. Well, uh, my Christmas. Let's see. I worked. So working the day after a holiday uh, will suck every time. This is not news. Uh, but worked on Christmas Eve. Uh, the day before, I told a guy at work uh, who's working around chemicals. Um, hey. Uh, you should probably wear safety glasses if you're pouring acids. No. And, uh, yeah, you should probably also wear gloves and, no. uh, you know, proper protection equipment. And he goes, ah, I've been doing this a while. I'll be fine. I leave on Christmas Eve early, and I get a phone call saying the guy has gone to the hospital oh, for, <laughs> for uh, breathing in noxious acid fumes. So he went full Dr. Stone going into the sulfuric volcano. <laughs> You know, PPE is for wimps. PPE I mean, is for wimps. That is, that is that is the moniker of uh, of the entire location I work at. I <laughs> fuck it. I hope when you got that call, you just went, "Yeah, I told him." <laughs> yeah, because apparently in a delirium, my name came up, and they're like, "Well, what did you do?" I was like, "I fucking told him to wear PPE," and he's like, "Ah, whatever." And, I, and, I, and then he went to the hospital, and he showed up. I'm um, no child. I don't need safety. <laughs> Safety's for pussies, right? Yep. So, 
Uh, that happened on Christmas Day. I'm waiting for my mother to fly in from uh, the Texas, and I wake up without power in my apartment, uh, and that proceeded to happen all morning and day until two hours before she arrived at night. So that was awesome. That was a good... And because everything's closed, I realized that the area I live in doesn't have enough Jewish people because no Chinese restaurants were open. <laughs> no, need more Jewish people in Rhode Island. <laughs> And then uh, New Year's went to the wrestling show. At the stroke of midnight was the main event in which uh, we saw four large men proceed to kill each other with various weapons the fans brought. So golf balls, uh, a plastic toy dinosaur with nails in its head. Oh, jeez. Uh, what, what else? Um, the classic toilet seat with tacks. Oh, uh, yeah, a bloody mess. Made my mom very uncomfortable. Um, and she was... Absolutely trash drunk by like eight o'clock. She it, it, the the event was so long she sobered up and then proceeded to get trashed again. <laughs> so it's it pretty awesome. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Family issues. Hey, back. don't worry about it. Did you get his lunch money <laughs> from my father? I don't think so. <laughs> hey, I don't I don't judge who you gank. No, no, I'll I'll leave that to my brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Take his lunch money, too, then. Okay, sure. That's twice the money. Because he'll gank your father, and then you gank him, you get twice as much money. I I don't think so. Come on, the, the, the science checks out. I've very much looked into this. You know, this. you are the geologist here, so I'll believe you. What are you saying? Oh, thank you. Okay. The chaos Robotic. hath arrived on my end. Great. All right. <clears throat> Enough bullshitting around. We got we got to quickly go through a lot of all this other stuff. I am playing a drop, Tori. I have given you notice. It's only about like Fantastic. two seconds. So I'm doing it. Done. Already. See how quick that was? Yeah, I guess. Uh, Alright. So yeah, we're moving on to my plan to watch list cleaning quest. Where I go through, you know, I go through my plan to watch list alphabetically and watch a watch a bunch of shows and then I talk about them like I always do and we are we have reached K this time and uh, the show that I'm going to be talking about is the uh, 8 episode uh, it is an OVA yes it is indeed an OVA the 8 episode OVA called Kubikiri Cycle or Kubikiri Cycle Aoiro Savanto Sara <coughs> Sare go Totsukai there you go you want Thank some you help it. buddy no I'm okay <laughs> you okay <laughs> Did you have a stroke? <laughs> no, I just mispronounced. I mispronounced, not corrected. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, this uh, OVA was directed by uh, Yuki Ase and uh, Yuki Shimbo because he's always uh, on there. And it was produced by Studio Shaft. And, uh, yeah. It's a adaptation of uh, the uh, manga. Sorry, it's a light novel, isn't it? Yeah, the novel's yes. uh, Saragoto series by uh, Nisio Isin. And um, the synopsis from Mal says... Due to mysterious disease, the genius Iria Akagami has been for forced by her family to stay in a mansion on the isolated Wet, uh, wet Crow's Feather Island. With only a handful of maids to keep herself entertained, Iria invites a variety of fellow geniuses to stay as guests in her home, including computer, uh, including computer savant Tomo Kuna, Kunagisa and her unnamed assistant. Uh, skilled for uh, yeah, skilled fortune teller Maki Himena, famous artist Kanami Ibuki, academic scholar Akane Sonoyama, and renowned cook Yayoi Sashi Sashirono. These vis uh, these visits progress as normal until one of the guests is found gruesomely murdered in the night without uh, a single clue as to the identity of the killer or a possible motive. Hmm. Tensions rise between these on the island, or between those on the island, as the killer remains at large, and Tomo's assistant takes it upon himself to uncover the culprit's identity before the murderous events progress any further. So yeah, it's essentially a uh, series of a bunch of uh, close rooms murder, uh, close room murders. So you know, no, theoretically no possible way for the killer to have committed a crime and also gotten away. And then we have these geniuses here who are. Who are here to uh, try to solve it? Because calling the police is not an option, and uh, 
waiting for the genius detective who was supposed to show up is apparently too much waiting. So, you know, these kids decided, sure, let's solve some murders. It's a spin and, uh, on the Agatha Christie novel. Mm. And essentially, you know, that's that's essentially the gist of it. Like, we see murders, we usually see, like, uh, beheaded corpses. That's kind of the thing that happens. Like, something happens, everybody's gathered, and then everybody splits up, and then kind of cut the next morning. They find a dead corpse. Maybe something happened before, like the first one, the uh, painter who dies. Uh, uh, there was a uh, there was an earthquake. And then when they, uh, when they went to check on her, she was found dead with pain cans all over the place and presumably having been knocked over by the earthquake and whatnot. And then, but there's no traces of, there's no tracks, no, no uh, prints, like nobody walked over the paint or anything like that. So, you know, try to figure out how this was possible and stuff like that. And that's, that's how it goes essentially. And eventually, as always, you do at the end learn who, who committed it and then you learn the twist which I'm not going to spoil, and uh, then you get the kind of, yeah, as you learn twist and whatnot, you kind of get the full recap at the end, and there you go. Uh, yeah. Have you ever read <clears throat> or seen the movie And Then There Were None by no. Agatha Christie? No, I have not. This is and, uh, extremely, extremely similar to that yeah, story. Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe that. Well, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a closed room mother. Hmm. <laughs> It's really... <laughs> yeah, but all, all the way to the concept of people are trapped on an island, a murder occurs in a closed room, uh, a bunch of important figures of society have been gathered at this island uh, by the the, uh, the person in charge of the island. Uh, the only thing, the only difference here is our main character uh, is the one to solve the murder with the companion as opposed to <clears throat> um, Agatha Christie's recurring like super detective, but and then there were none didn't have that either, so it's makes it makes Kubikiri cycle even more close to that story. It's just an anime spin on it, which is why I quite like this series. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, With the Monogatari everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it's by Shaft and it's written by Nisio and uh yeah, no, I think for me this show like it was it was okay, but I'm not entirely into the whole close room murder murder ah, thing. Okay, it's a uh, I understand like I understand the appeal like it's the appeal of like a theoretically uh, impossible to perform murder and then how it is performed. But for me, kind of what what it all then eventually hinges on is how. And for 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 the for first thing, I thought that how this was done, uh, even after the first murder, I thought how it was done was pretty not obvious how it was done, but why they could go because the problem is with the first murder, there is a uh, there is the assumption that this person, the painter, was killed after this earthquake that knocked over the paint cans, right? However, as you since there's no traces, since there's no tracks. The obvious answer, the obvious answer to that, that should be, well, she was killed before. Right? Oh, that's well. that. No <laughs> shit. They can't have done it after because the entire room was filled with paint, uh, which also doesn't really make sense. But whatever. We then see, we then learn that that, but that also couldn't be possible because the uh, painter's assistant ended up confirming after the earthquake that she was still alive. That, but just that the paint cans had been knocked over and there was paint everywhere. So how is this possible? Well, as always in these situations, it's the most obvious answer that's usually correct. The guy who's receiving the phone call is involved in some way, somehow. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, you watch any detective anything, right? It's always... Uh, the first suspect is the person that alerted everybody to the situation uh, or has the first key piece of evidence, right? Yeah, but not always. I mean, I it's understand. It's not always the case, but that that's your first suspect. Yeah, so you always sense. have to question whom brought this information to you. Sure, right? But then it becomes possible. Like, he wouldn't lie because he is, he is very faithful to this. Uh, oh. 
There's that a... is Vader, right? He would never betray. He would never betray her, which kind of leads into that whole twist, which is where, which is where I the show kind of lost me. It's I feel like that twist, like it's one of those things. Like I don't, I'm struggling to buy that twist. I'm, again, I'm not going to say what it is, but I'm struggling to buy that twist because it it involves some pretty fucking weird. I, I, no, I'm not even going to say that because it's going to give it away. Uh, yeah. Anyways, it, it's just Nisio Isin type shit. <laughs> yeah, but even then, even for him, that's kind of like this is some low ball. This is low ball, even by his standards. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, did you I, at least enjoy the show? I enjoyed it for a while. I did, okay. but I feel like the ending kind of lets it down. Uh, like the first. Yeah, when they don't buy of, the ending, you don't buy it. Yeah, like that's the problem with these types of stuff. If you if you're not into the ending, it, the kind of show becomes a little bit pointless. Like I enjoy, I don't. I, I enjoy the process of like trying to so like obviously with a mystery, the process of trying to solve the murder is the is the fun part, right? right? And then again, kind of a little bit annoying how they decide to throw in certain characters who just can't <clears throat> help themselves but to feel it necessary to ar- uh, arise suspicion on themselves. It's like I. They definitely didn't do it. Wink. I, I absolutely hate that. I feel like that's not what you would do or the fucking characters who are just like... I'm innocent. Just like, By the way, I hated this person yeah, in college. I called no. their mother a slut. <laughs> and I stole all their money in in, uh, in high school. Yes. Like, that, every the day. Co- the fucking cook who's running around, <laughs> like, who's running around. Every time somebody looks at her, she's like, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Runs away. It's like... Yes, I hated uh, that person. Yeah. Yes. There was my knife and there was my genetic material in the scene. But I didn't <laughs> do it. It's like... Sure. <laughs> How about the genius who's just like the most like, I didn't do it, but I know none of you are going to believe me, so uh, why don't we just jail me right the fuck now? Because it's clearly the only <laughs> solution to do. I am fucking, I am capable and willing to do this, but uh, I didn't do it, but I can't prove it, so fucking take me out. And what does that lead to? Another murder. <laughs> Ooh, who saw that coming? Right what now, a right? genius on what an genius. island of these so-called geniuses. Yep, but and as we know, also, geniuses uh, do not have common sense. This is also. A I mean, life. again, that also did lead into the next part, which is also part of that twist. But yeah, it, it's like I feel like it. It needed to nail <laughs> that, like that. It needed to nail the ending, and when the ending shows up, and when you get to the ending, and especially the way the ending is shown to us, where it's just like, ah, they've all got off the island, everything's daijo bu now. Like, there's nothing to worry about, and then all of a sudden, this fucking woman comes driving up in her fancy car and fucking kidnaps Boku, uh, and, uh, <laughs> like, fucking drags him, like, no, let me explain to you, you were really close, but let me explain how this really went down, and it's just like, oh god, why? <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree uh, with anything you're saying, I highly enjoyed the show, but I'm with you on the, uh, on ho- how it all played out in the end. I was like, ah, damn it, you were so close. <laughs> this is really impressive for somebody with no detective skill. But that's just you. I am the great detective. Nothing goes uh, unnoticed by me, even if I wasn't even there. I know the answers. I knew the answers from the moment I got the phone call of the first murder. I am right. the great detective. <laughs> like, sh- It's like, shut up, Conan. <laughs> 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 at least he needs to be at the scene. <laughs> yeah. It's literally just like, well, as soon as I got that phone call, I knew exactly what was happening and what was about to happen. Now, why the fuck did you hurry up? <laughs> why didn't you, oh, I don't know, get there earlier? <laughs> I were like, no, I'll show up in, <laughs> I'll show no. up in three weeks. Okay. Great, great job, detective. <laughs> Uh, but then again, I guess if the detective stops all the murders, they have nothing to do, so... No, he's not the police, he just solves the crime. He solves the crime, yep. he doesn't have any reason to stop any murders to happen. But yeah, nah, nah, it's okay, I ended up giving it a six. Like, it's an okay, okay show. Oh, it it needed gosh. that ending. It really <clears throat> needed that ending. Uh. Alright, play the next drop. Don't do it. Just for you, Hickey, I'm playing Bebop. Hickey, it's all yours. 
All right, so it is time for the first <coughs> manga moan webtoon checkout of the year, and this is the 25th checkout over a webtoon called Wake Up Dead Man. Uh, a <laughs> a webtoon decided on the last minute because JD told me I had to do it, and I remember something I <laughs> I've read when I was in middle school. Uh, <laughs> it's written by written and drawn by Yong Hun King and was released in Dom Webtoon in the year 2010 so 10 years ago it spans 26 Crazy. chapters with sequels which I think the total chapters is 87 something like, something that. like that yeah less than 90 chapters <clears throat> uh, summary from the anime planet as JD provided in the documents Saving You're the welcome. life. Thank you for noticing. Yeah. Tori didn't notice. No, I did, but I just ignore it. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm trying. Something a Norwegian would do. I'm trying to go like on my love you JD streak and other fuck you JD streak. So, providing love. <laughs> uh, I do I do like that streak? Yeah. I mean, I just I just I already threw shade at you of, <laughs> for not being able to read instructions. So, might as well. <laughs> Give you some credit. Uh, saving the life of the girl he loves, Sahu incidentally turns into a zombie, and now he's trying to survive in a stone jungle, believing that one day he will sing for the world. Okay, sure, yes. I was in middle school. That shit was really fun to read. <laughs> Done. I'm sure it was. If you are, if you are twelve or thirteen years old. Wake up, that man is really cool. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this webtoon was uh, definitely not for me. I'm not 12, 13 years old. <laughs> I am just over half that. There's your there's your math for you, Ryan Collin. Ha. Huh. Yeah. Um, I thought it was okay for for the first chapter, and then as soon as it starts going into the whole teenage angst thing. Uh, with, ugh, I love this girl, we're childhood friends, but I'm a zombie now. Let's all talk and just be sad all the time. And then it shows, of course, Truck Coon coming. That's how he dies. And I'm like, oh my god, it's like every cliche stereotype you can imagine. <laughs> hmm. Along with the weird fourth oh, wall it's things the same that beginning Webtoons as love Zombie to do. Saga. I just yeah. realized that. It is... That was the yeah, synopsis for Zombieland Saga. <laughs> <laughs> if you take if you take off saving the life of the girl of uh, the girl he loves, change the name for the for Sakura, which is the girl from <laughs> Zombieland Saga. It's basically the same synopsis. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even like push her out of the way. He just holds her in front of the giant truck coming. So I'm like, um, and she, how did she survive? <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, you know what? Makes sense. She's totally fine, and for some reason they're both, I mean, they, their common hobby is singing and playing the guitar, but he sucks at it, or whatever, and she's really good. Doesn't He doesn't actually say he sucks at it, he's just, ah, oh, this part's difficult. She's like, I could do it. Like, oh, I'm sad, and I'm sad again. Like, everything's, he's, uh. he's, everything is, someone has a comment towards him, and he just goes, I'm sad. <laughs> yep. This <laughs> his reaction. I didn't like this very much. I, I pretty much I pretty dro I dropped this pretty quick. Yeah, to be honest. I realized that was going to happen. Although, did you saw Skeleton Man? I saw not Ghost Rider. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's... they even made a fourth wall reference to. Geez, if only your head was on fire, you would be Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they. Yeah, it's it's uh it's. The 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 comedy didn't do anything for me. Too many cliches. Too many stereotypes. Very much not into the whole I'm a sad teenager situation right now. <laughs> was in definitely no mood yes. <laughs> for for that. If, uh, if, <laughs> and, and the plot in general just seemed not interesting with the whole I'm a zombie, but I want to sing. And oh yeah, my not girlfriend is famous. Is an I don't know. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean it. It gets a little bit more action wise later because you know you have the the guys. Basically, the police trying to hunt down the zombies, and it goes into that with some 
action scenes and shootouts and stuff like that. So it 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 gets not so sad after the first few chapters, but yeah. <laughs> If you are to the thirteen, the show is this this mo is really fun. If you're not, if you're above that, then it's not for you. <laughs> yeah, I personally do not recommend it. I think it's the first uh, checkout that I've just straight up failed. Oh no! I think it's the first one. I was expecting. As, isn't it? It's something I remember from reading from you know <laughs> middle school, and you judged my middle school taste. <laughs> they good. No, <laughs> Tori Leave with my the sauce. Best. <laughs> Leave my past in the past. No, you should always be held re- responsible for your past. Have you not been on Twitter? <laughs> oh, go find some of my old bowling tweets from ten years ago. You might find, will. find some. You might find some interesting drunken tweets back then. Cancel him. I find some interesting <laughs> drunken tweets now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't tweet drunk. Me neither, I but know. I send at, I send at least not at least messages. not now. <laughs> I I still send questions. Wait, no, messages. I take that back. Technically, I was drunk on New Year's Eve, and I was uh-huh. tweeting. Exactly. Fucking Technically, liar. they were drunk. T- Fucking tweets. liar! God. Huh. Uh, my latest shtick is uh, I have a couple other friends. And they have Twitter accounts, and anytime they make a spelling error or grammatical error, I just type in like spell check to their Twitter shit. They hate it. Wow. That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Quick and easy checkout. Maybe we'll do a longer one next time. I don't know. We'll see. Look, man. Oh, I was, what's I the was next drinking drop? until two days ago. You asked me, oh, remember the just choose That's something. I'm like, fine. oh, shit. I'm, I'm home. Go uh, uh, <laughs> this one. <laughs> it's fine. It was so bad I didn't have to waste as much time. Right? <laughs> All right, drop coming. Mada, mada, da ne. Ah, with the quick drops today. All right, pacing in anime. So, have you ever watched an anime or Never. TV show or a movie, and you're just like, man, I'm watching this Witcher series on Netflix, and it's throwing a shit ton of information at me, and I can't keep up. That's fast pacing. Have you ever watched Witch Hunter Robin and you're like, nothing's happening. Relatively unimportant shit's happening. It's fucking slow pacing. <laughs> Don't forget hack sign. Even worse for that. Oh, uh, that's that's uh that's NyQuil pacing. That's just next level. <laughs> have you ever have you ever watched something and fell asleep and then the next congruent two, three times you also fall asleep trying to do it? Yeah, that's dot hack. Got me there. Yeah. Next level. Anyways. So pacing in anime is very important. Uh, probably we... I don't think we've discussed it too much into shows and re- uh, retro reviews in the past. Um, but we have talked about like how the story plays out. Yeah, usually, that's, that's... yeah. Usually, we've talked about pacing through the decades. So I guess it's, right. it's interesting because like when we see something from the 60s, it is extremely quick. Everything is so quick, and then you go to the seventies, and everything is extremely slow. Gets even slow in the eighties, and then you know it, it keeps some pace in in the nineties, and then on the two thousands where the rhythm is actually very fine most of the time, except if it, you know which uh, kind of robbing kind of situation. I, I, I don't know if I don't know if I quite agree with you. That, huh. That pacing is fine. I feel like a lot of 2000 shows struggles with not just kind of like being either too fast paced or too slow paced. I feel like a lot of 2000s time kind of struggled with keeping a consistent pace. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes I, it goes I really fast, and sometimes it, saying, it, it just really slows down. It is. I forgot the word. Hold on. I, I understand what you're saying, and I. Uh... It's because they lack. Scale, I know. I know. <laughs> content. <laughs> they they lack they lack content to feel uh, whatever they are trying to, oh, yes, to address. The infamous beach episode in the middle, or pool episode, or yeah, onsen episode. Two, because like some in the some excuse to put them. We've <laughs> talked about it. It's it's uh, going out of the pacing topic, but like 
anime in the 2000s, it becomes very... Uh, how can I say? Production friendly? Or mass right. production friendly. So you just pump it out as quick as you can. You know... And sometimes you you get out a lot of the the content from the original thing to get that mass production thing going. Um, so yeah, and and because of that, maybe the rhythm is weird or you know inconsistent because it lacks content. Or in the sixties, you want to tell everything in one episode, apparently, and the seventies. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta set up all your characters, all your story, everything in the first episode. The second episode, you tone it down a little bit. The third episode, then you can start doing your uh, episodic. Everything's the same until the next plot point happens, and you see yeah, you it... do see a lot of that carry over in the '70s that we've seen. But uh, there there are, there is always going to be the show that sticks out, you know, our uh, Akage no Anne, our, our um, Future Boy Conans of the world, uh, those are very consistent. You know, it's it's here to tell a story. It's here to have your arcs. Uh, it's very consistent throughout, as, as Tori put out in the 2000s. Um, it's not going to have a lot of that just filler, episodic nature to it. No, yeah, but, but like, in the 2000s, it, it's a different... It's, it's a different breed. Even... even not even the end of the 90s you see what happens in the 2000s because you know it's mass production not even you have mass production of anime but you have mass consumption of entertainment medias so you gotta understand more people have televisions and more you know you start to have the ex uh, access to the internet and stuff like that so if you are producing an anime and you want to sell the anime or anything like that you need to understand maybe the person will watch one episode Maybe watch the first episode, right? Or one episode in the middle and things like that, especially because anime goes on television uh, in the early hours of morning in Japan. So, you know, so it makes sense for the, the rhythm in the 2000s, although it's not so good for us. Colin, what's your feeling over pacing in the animu world? I'd say it's pretty important. It's to, I mean, you need to keep the audience interested, and it's hard to do that if you're suddenly fast in one episode, slow in the next. And I remember one one show that I like but had a bit of a pacing problem was Last Exile. Oh. Because there were just a few episodes that were just slow as molasses. And there was, like, one episode in the middle of the show that was just pure angsting on every character's... <laughs> part i was like what the heck's going on do something yeah and you yeah, also have the production problems by the end with characters becoming paint blobs the 2000s i'd have to rewatch it yeah 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 so the element of pacing that i think upsets me the most and it really takes me out of a show is uh of course it all depends on what story you're trying to tell Right, if you're telling a super robot story, I don't expect the pacing to be how intricate the inside of the robot is, uh, where do you get your fuel. You know, I expect every episode is going to have a self-contained monster of the week arc, right? And that's that's its pacing, right? Mm -hmm. If we have something like Naruto, let's take a uh, Naruto Shippuden with um, its filler episodes. Okay? Oh my god. <laughs> So you're in the middle of this grand archeal story. Uh, seemingly character, you're getting uh, your character developments, you're getting um, you know power upgrades, what have you. And then your very next episode, it has nothing to do with that at all. In fact, it might be in a total alternate universe. That's that's the f the filler aspect of it, which is quite annoying. That's what Tori. Uh, said with here's your beach episode here's your here's your onzen episode what whatever it, it really throws you out of the pace of the show uh and then in naruto's case it's it's it could go on for months with no end in sight so so that will completely take you out of the show and at least in my case just totally drop the show altogether like why do i bother 
Um, yeah. The later Bleach and, episodes were bad for that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the first the first Naruto series, the first, I think it's 150 episodes out of the 201, are all relative to the story. And then the last 51 has nothing to do with anything. It's all filler. So you yeah. don't have to watch it at all. Uh, the other aspect of pacing... Um, Let's see, uh, I could definitely think of, you know what, we were on the topic of dot .hack, okay, uh-huh. uh, prior to the cast, because that is a fantastic example of slow pacing in an anime. You, you, your, your story is, uh, you're this, uh, I'm of course going off memory, but you're an NPC, you're a character in this video game, all the characters are playing this video game, and then they, they, uh, they realize this, this person can't escape. But the information given to the viewer is so minimalistic. And then everything they're doing in the show, standing around talking, discussions Mm -hmm. going on forever about, is this information even important? Well, you don't know yet. So how are you supposed to be invested in a show that you know nothing about, right? Uh, Fast pacing... um, I guess that would be... Would Macross be a good example of that? Oh, Too I mean, fast just, pacing? Just, take, just take any comedy type of you, show. You know what? Fast pacing would be info yeah. dumps. Yeah, I think... A lot, a, a, lot of me, a lot of mech anime have that, where it's, here's the universe, here's the problem, it's just a narrator talking forever, and then it drops you in the universe, right? And you just go. Yeah, I think a good I modern mean, example. Oh, oh, good modern uh, example of a show with really, really fast pacing is Fire Force. Is that? I can see that. Yeah, that one yeah. goes I really mean, fast. Fire Force for me struggles not even just with yeah. fire, with like really fast pacing. It struggles with like kind of this again the inconsistent pace, right? Because it's like it's really I understand like it again. It's a show and it wants to kind of get to the most exciting parts. Because you're sure. the teens and gotta keep their attention, right? But then again, it also has this like comedic timing that's just kind of that throws whatever that kind of fucks with everything, right? Because you get these moments where it's like you're go moving fast through the story, and it's then it kind of stops to throw in a joke. Then we pan to like some sort of fucking reaction, or rather stone face, because they're almost never reactive. And then it's kind of, kind of holds that for a few seconds, and then we kind of keep going. It's, it's or like, get real it'll kind of like, naked in some corner. Yeah, you kind of you have this <laughs> fast pace, and all of a sudden it'll just come to a fucking screeching halt, and then it'll keep going again. It's like, eh, that's, that's, that's kind of... It, it gets better after a while, but it, especially in the beginning of Fire Force, that is just rampant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just not... It's not... It, it's just not great. But yeah, like... To me, I can kind of I can excuse a little bit of uh, a little bit of slow pacing at times, right? I don't. I'm one of those people who don't necessarily mind a little bit of info dumping. I don't want a lot, but like a little bit of info dumping is fun. Like take for example, a lot of people dislike the first episode to Phase Zero uh, mm-hmm. because it's literally just a uh, oh, yeah. an info dump, right? It's a 40 minute info dump. <laughs> so it's not even fast pacing. It's a fucking long episode, but and the majority of the uh, of the episode or a lot of the episode takes place in the same place with characters just talking and walking in circles literally it's not exactly entertaining that being said fate zero was my introduction to the fate universe in general and the more i watched fate i did find myself later on kind of appreciating that first episode not because it was enti- not because it was super entertaining but because it did do enough to make me kind of understand like what was going on there something that i wouldn't have done if it would have just thrown me right into fate because if you know fate fate can be pretty fucking confusing right Uh, it's a lot of complex information that's constantly being thrown at you and it's up to you to put it together before the next set of complex information comes you know what's another good example of that that goes with fate zero ghost in the shell standalone complex oh yeah right Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of reading it's a lot of characters talking at each other about complex issues and th- uh, topics that you the, the you the viewer need to think about mm. in order to put events together to uh, fully mm. understand it and it, it's up to you to put it all together quick enough before that next set comes uh fate zero does have that on a different Ooh. 
on a, on a very much issues. different event scale. Ugh. Excuse Monogatari me, Eki? as well, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. That's Monogatari series. It kind of does that. Same oh thing. yeah, that's oh. super it fast. Lot of, it talks yeah. a lot. Like, but I mean, yeah, but uh, like again, this isn't one of those. This isn't even like. Uh, this isn't even talking like you know bad pacing, right? Because these are these are like these are decisions made. It's like go, like you mentioned, goes in the shell standalone complex. The show is made like that. It's supposed to be like that. That's what the show is. Yes. Right? The, when you're the talking, negative, the, when you're the, talking the bad negative. pacing, right? Bad pacing becomes that thing where it's like, it's, it's not, it's not intense. Like, I don't like fast pacing, but fast, but like take Speed Racer, right? I don't particularly like the pace of Speed <laughs> Racer, but it's, that, it's still deliberate, right? It's, it is deliberate. It's made like that because again, it has that like, people don't have all, t- all the time in the world. You need to get kind of, in order for, to get a story going, you need to kind of get a lot of information out, uh, out. And if there's one thing I know, and that hasn't changed from the 60s, not just anime, but a lot of mediums in general, the first episode is probably one of the hardest episodes you have to do. The first and the last episode are two of the hardest episodes you have to make. Because the first episode, you have to introduce the world, you have to introduce what's going on, you have to introduce the characters, but you don't have, you, you cannot overwhelm everyone, and you cannot take too long. <laughs> right? So it's like, it becomes this, it becomes this problem. It's like, how do you hook people without fe- making it feel rushed or too slow right that's that's kind of the, that's the challenge that a lot of people have faced. and you do feel like a lot of uh one show that i was recently thinking about was um uh alderaman of the sky which is a madhouse show uh oh based on a light novel yes yeah right the first episode of that show the lost of forgotten appalling, of the <laughs> yeah fucking appalling show it is like the first episode is horrid because it is nothing but it is almost nothing but exposition, like, and it is the kind of it is fucking bad exposition. It is like we have our main characters who's just lacing around in a tree, while random fucking side characters who are not relevant to the story at all are, are walking around talking about the events, what has happened and what is about to happen, like what is going on in this world. But there, it's not organic at all because it's not like they're having a conversation. It literally feels like they're reading off a fucking script. And that's the first episode. Oh, it yeah. is absolutely I mean, yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah. It gets it gets better. It like the show itself gets better from there. And I feel like it finds its feet. But that first episode, it's just like it it gives you a lot of information, and yet it still somehow manages to feel non organic and slow. I don't know how yeah, they managed to yeah. do that, but they did. Because <laughs> pacing pacing alone doesn't make an anime good. Although eh, some people might disagree, but, you know. Usually, uh, usually they won't. Well, no, there's usually a lot they of, won't say. Right. Like usually they won't say, but how they they talk about why an anime is good or bad, you can see they put a lot of emphasis in pacing, but yep. a density and voice acting, everything makes a show very good. I think one of the best things for pacing, for example, is rhythm, the music that is going on. Uh-huh. Uh, if the music make sense to the type of pacing you're trying to put in an anime it would be very good that's usually why you don't see people complaining on pacing in comic series because usually yeah. it's also packed with music the music goes with the same kind of pacing of the anime and makes sense as well with the rhythm of voice acting all the baron voice acting is horrible yeah like it is it is horrid and everything makes it feels unorganic makes it feel slow even though the first episode pacing is not that slow but because it feels so inorganic because it, it feels like they're just reading words out of a <laughs> out of a book yeah it also makes the pacing of the anime the the more we're talking about this it's getting me further to realize that pacing is is the it's the complete aspect of the show it all depend. like to me it, it mostly depends on the story to tell that uh-huh. that in itself is what flow you're you are you are to do for the rest of the show uh uh-huh. do you want do you want it to be that consistent flow or do you want to break it apart all depends on that story but now uh-huh. now that we've spoken more about it uh yeah voice acting is very important uh, we'll get into Witch Hunter Robin here in a second. <laughs> uh, you know, if you have characters in monotone voices, like in Dot Hack, right? 
it'll 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 just exacerbate this slow pace that you're already going at. Now it feels like it's a snail's pace, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, or the music is happening when it's it's this um, violin riff that's at do 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 do, and yeah, people clear characters are running around. You don't know, but it feels slow even though they're running. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean one one other thing that it all I, comes together in in what what the pace is being told. Yeah, one other thing that happens a lot in anime, I don't know why it's it's almost exclusive to anime. It's picking up a lot of speed by the end, where like you yes. like past the 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 opsy of the series. So like you you already have the major conflict. You are going to the resolution. You're getting to the resolution, which is usually like episode twelve and thirteen. I'm like okay, like mm-hmm. you have you had a major conflict, the tension was high, we solved the conflict, so now by the logic of script writing, you start slowing down to get the conclusion, and it starts to slow down and suddenly just picks up again the speed. <laughs> and yeah. like, I mean, I think how, I, mean, I mean we've I watched think... a show that's a great example of that. Yeah, you usually Yamato. What usually happens when you re- yeah. when you say something like. How will they finish this story with only two episodes left? It's only forty minutes of animation. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, but there's like, so that's, many that's things the thing, to, right? to solve. I feel like that pacing, that pacing issue you're talking, or that pickup of speed at the end. I feel like that that definitely does have a lot to do with the whole adaptation process. And I do like there is like take for example adapting a manga, right? A lot of times when you want to do, you want to reach a certain point. But you have a set set of episodes you wanna uh, you need to get through, so it means like at first you have to make sure that you don't go too fast so that you don't <laughs> end up having to drag out the end. Or B, it, sometimes when you miss that, you end up having to speed up at the end. And then you know, for a lot of shows, at least I say it's more common now. Now that the anime seems to be a little bit more, there seems to be a bit more of a chance for anime to actually get second and even third and four seasons if you're. If I can strike the blood. Well, yeah, uh, it's, it's not. But, uh, it's like, not, it's, it's, like it's not it a multi-million like, yen need... commercial anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, but like you kind of you have to drag it out because like you have they have to reach a certain spot that makes sense for it to end. So it's just like uh, we gotta fucking kick up the pace now because this is uh, this is all irrelevant shit. But we need to set up for that se- that possible second season if we're gonna get one. <laughs> uh. So what are what are. Uh some examples of shows with great pacing that you would recommend because i got a few off the top of my head right right now i know one immediately akagano i mean well, you yes. mentioned it right and that's that's again where it's like what i love about akagano is akagano is slow and there's no getting around that. it is fucking slow at first the about like like but I life said, is slow about at yeah first. i know right well it's not even <laughs> it's not even I mean, it's not even life. She only gets 18. Uh, 17, actually. Uh, but anyways, like, you... No, she uh, gets to her 20s. Nope, she got to 17. Doesn't she? Nope, 17. No, she was, yeah, she was 17, 18. <laughs> yeah, right, but the first half of the show is pretty slow, in a sense, because at this point, you are getting everything, right? Everything that happens, because everything is new. First day of school, first day in new house, first right. day working, first day this, first day that, first day... First day out of the person, orphanage. Meeting that person, <laughs> yeah. Meeting this person, meeting that person. Talking first this, talking day that. Out and then you get to the second half. Yep. And then you get the... Uh, well, she was off not the orphanage. But anyways, then you get to the second half. And all of a sudden, literally, you can... During, sir, during just a few episodes... We can have gone through multiple months. We can have gone through multiple seasons all of a sudden, right? And why is that? Well, because you don't have to see everything anymore. It's not relevant. You don't need to see every day at school. You know that she goes to school to learn. You don't need to see what they learn in every single Yeah, class. how often are we going to see her crack a blackboard over the boy in school? I mean, come I mean, on. I would, I, I would have liked to see that multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, like, it's, it's one of those things, like, it's like, it, it cha- the pacing of uh, Kagura and changes... But it makes sense for it to change. Why wouldn't it change? It's, it's still kind of just trying to highlight, you know, those moments that are worthy of highlighting. And every after a certain point, it is not worthy uh, worth of highlighting every single day anymore or every week. And like now, it's like, eh, she had this this encounter this month, and then like three months later, this thing happened, and then like, yeah, well, well you know it, what it, it, you know what it also does. And the, this is, the pacing this also changes goes with... as you know she she progresses and and grow up. When you were a kid, everything mm. is important. When you are older, right. only you know oh, yeah. the handful of encounters yeah. you have in your life and actually matter. I mean, that's like yeah, like you said, 
kind of just like real life, right? I remember when I was a kid, a year was a fucking long ass time. Now I swear a year is over fucking right away. Oh, it's like it's dude, already been a We already, already one a week in <laughs> January. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I mean, Sun God to the Lion has quite a good pacing, although it's very slow. It's excruciatingly well, it's, it's, slow. But well, you know, it's slow. It's you slow still on have the other things. To match. Yeah, you still have the. It, it's really packed with content and really good voice acting. So the pacing, although it's actually very slow, it doesn't feel like that. The other one, which is also very slow, before JD talks about Sun God, because he really likes it. Uh, it's Anonatsu de Materu. Although I don't think uh, Anonatsu de Materu is a good series, but <laughs> it's an okay series. Yeah, it's it's a fine series, but the the pacing is quite good for a thirteen year like thirteen episode series. And if they even throw in a, a festival and a, a pseudo bitch episode in the middle, <laughs> of course they. Right. Uh, to me, what makes Akage no Anne's pacing important uh, is the events and conversations we're shown on screen. What's happening is important, right? Like you said, Tori, we're not getting her in school every day after a certain point because we get it. Yeah, she went to school. We went to school. We saw her go to school. We don't need to see her go to school every day anymore. So the show is not wasting our time. What's the next important uh, aspect of the story being told? Which is her life. It moves on. Other shows that do that, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. We're not seeing him drink brandy. uh, We are seeing him drink brandy tea every day, right? But we're not seeing him wake up, pours it. He has, hey, what's for breakfast today? No, it's, all right, what's on the docket? Oh, shit, war. (laughs) What's next, brah? That kind of... So that's Legend of the Galactic Heroes is doing conversations mixed in with everyday things but these conversations matter oh he's being sent to location b instead of a okay that matters because a war is going on in location b um uh zangatsu no lion uh, from this event happened at the chess tournament the shogi tournament now he's home and he's devastated because something happened right or something triggered him Instead of just immediately cutting to the next tournament, you're seeing his reaction. You're seeing how much this afflicted him, right? Mm. We're not getting him in a cafe talking to somebody at work like nothing ever happened. You know, those are unimportant events, right? Mm. That's what shows... That shows good pacing and what's important. You're not getting the viewer's time wasted. So it doesn't... In this aspect, it doesn't matter if it's slow... A slow feeling or a fast feeling as long as you get what's happening on screen and you can follow along and it remains important then that's good pacing yeah yeah i definitely agree i mean this is why i kind of dis- uh, dislike because i've seen a seen an argument thrown around a little bit in regards to pacing and what a lot of people have so su- i see a lot of people suggest is a more realistic pacing which i don't agree with because a realistic pacing would essentially mean that things that happen in a show would happen like they do here like you said he loses like for example he loses at the at shogi right he loses at the shogi tournament and then he goes home and he's he's upset right uh if this was realistic that would have we should have been following him right we should have followed him as he is is that realization that he's lost and the sadness is bearing over him as he's going home and all that right but it's not it's not that important like it you don't kind of the fu- the funny thing to me has always been like the arguments like you don't see characters go to the toilet every time right does that mean they don't go to the toilet <laughs> the answer to that is yes but that's because they're anime characters but that's a, like, hey, 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 like hey. it wouldn't be interesting are, for us to see a are, character real inside of my heart no 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 no, no. <laughs> like they, yeah, they wouldn't be fun to watch a character go to the toilet like multiple no, times a, a realistic <laughs> a realistic kind of anime <laughs> with pacing in that sense will be your line april because they show you quite a lot of the characters yeah. realizing stuff and uh, very yeah, minimalistic was, uh... expressions <laughs> from time to time. Which, it's not very... Uh, you know, uh. it's okay-ish, but they could have told so many more stories if they, wasn't, if they weren't 
No, paying attention to such minimalistic details. Mm. Yeah, no, I do, but I do like one of the things that I particularly notice. Like, I think uh, for me, at least now, a lot of the better shows that I watch are the shows that manages to make like, uh, to kind of nail that like slower pace kind of where they even manages to where they give you like the most important that like important information. But they manage to sell that important information, even if it's not necessarily that groundbreaking. Like, even if it's not really that big of a deal. Like I said, I've said this multiple times, but obviously my favorite my favorite show is Aria the Animation. And in Aria the Animation, there is a lot of stuff that just is seemingly very important. And, sorry, unimportant. And to most people, it wouldn't be. Because it's, it's not a big deal. Oh no, it's fucking whatever real life is happening a snowball collapse like minimal stuff oh no she has to cut her hair now because it got burned like unimportant things to us but the reason why i like it is because the show does a good job for me to sell these things that i understand that it means a lot because i understand the character who this happens to when aika has to, has to cut her hair because of the fucking because she burned it i understand why this is a big deal because i know this character I've seen her. I've fucking I've I've been I've spent a long time learning who this person is and what what is and isn't important to her. Therefore, when this happens, I know it's important. Even though, in on a grand scale of things, it is not even remotely important. Any uh, any last words before we move on? Oh, oh yeah, I want to. great. I want to point out few more mainstream examples of of anime that have good pacing steins okay. is one is it, i feel like that's got a pretty tightly written yeah, story sure sure it's it's you know come on guys let's not be such sweaty nerds this time <laughs> please come on yes it is for 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 standard uh oh i've watched that japanese animation thing yes and for what it is gurren lagan has good pacing too it does, but it is high octane pacing. <laughs> that's what I. That's why I said for what it is, it fits perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, I mean, yeah, that is. Well, but even if it's, even if it's high octane uh, pacing, you still have every single thing there to make it a very good and entertaining main enemy. The character development, exactly. the character discovery, packed with yep. content interesting Definitely. things ending in space with aliens it's it's all there i'm just going through my list and i i spotted <laughs> nana which has also very good pacing up until a point i would agree yeah with you. i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> the very obvious point yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> good call tori <laughs> it, yeah it has it has very good ta- uh, pacing up to that one point which is a spoiler we did we did an a Nana cast, didn't we? Or did I just no, watch it and oh no, no, I just watched it and vented it out with Tori. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And My Hero Academia is probably one of the best paced shonen animes I've seen. Too bad it's trash. <laughs> and <laughs> fuck you. I, it is I, trash I, and you know it. Like it, it shut up, it. I actually I I kind of agree with you. I understand like people are People have always been salty at the pacing of My Hero Academia because it's slow. It's very slow, and it is like it's it's still adapting. Oh, it's still adapting manga, like slow. it's still adapting a shonen manga, like you would expect a shonen manga to be adapted about a chapter, an episode, uh, right? And but I do kind of appreciate one of the things, and this is one thing that I think is really good for a lot of more modern shows, uh, for the modern shows, is that it they decided to f- say fuck it to this like long running style where it's. You get fucking shit tons of uh, filler. You still get the filler movies, but you can choose to not watch those. Um, right? And I really do appreciate this, right? Because they take breaks in between seasons so that they don't have to worry about catching up to the manga. So yes, it's, it's still adapting it fairly slowly. But at the very least, you don't have to deal with all the fucking uh, with all the fucking pointless fillers. And all you have to complain about now is the fact that, oh no, I have to wait like two or three seasons until the next next season the horror <laughs> why can't i get it all now even though the manga is still publishing and it's if you do that it's going to go to spo- uh, go to filler and nobody likes filler 
maybe some people like Philip. But if you do, then I don't, I don't know what to say to you. You need help. But yeah, like it's <laughs> it, it's like I do appreciate. I do so I do appreciate it. Yes, it's slow. Yes, it's but as for for what it is, I do agree. It is one of the better ones for the simple reason fact that it doesn't have it doesn't have a need to go to uh to go to spoil the spoilers filler. <laughs> Well, a show that's also doing that with that same mindset is uh, Haikyuu and Food Wars. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, again, my point, modern shows, because this yeah. is this is a more modern thing, right? Back in the day, when people were like, yeah, we're going to adapt this really popular, really long-running show, they would have been like, or really long-running manga, they would have been like, yeah, okay, time to start now. We are, because we're going to keep this going for a while. Yeah, on the flip Attack side. On Titan. <laughs> Mm-hmm. On the flip side, Dragon Ball Z is one of the worst paced shonen out there. <laughs> as everybody will. As anybody well, who's watching I mean, will tell you. Yes and no. Uh, that that has a lot to do with how it aired on TV. It just kept playing episodes over and over and over again. With seemingly not advancing ever. And then just all of a sudden, out after like three years... Oh! We're going to continue this and not tell anybody. <laughs> well, I mean, like, even within, even within, like, the canon episodes, they stretch things out so freaking long. It's like, characters will spend literal minutes just staring at each other. Well, that's, well, yeah, I that's mean, Dragon Ball I mean, Z. If that is, not even Dragon Ball. If that is bad pacing, then Natsumi and the Book of Friends <laughs> has, like, oh. <laughs> seven seasons that you can compress into three because it is literally the same thing yeah no but like i'll also allow me to throw some shade because uh one piece especially early on does that as well there there is nothing more frustrating than watching one piece and having this happen luffy gets into a fight with the enemy and then what happens he is about to fucking punch him but hold it we're about to explain exactly why he is punching him we need to have a conversation. He also needs to explain what he's going to do. And this fucking p- one punch is going to take fucking five minutes or more until it is thrown. Why the fuck do you do this? Hmm. I I don't get it. This is this is very common. You can't deny this, JD. This is common, especially early on. <laughs> it, early on, there is a lot of times where it's just like, every we are under attack, but hold on, I'm going to do something. After I have explained it, and we have talked about it, and I may even have a conversation with my enemy first, and then I'm going to do the thing. They do have <laughs> conversations mid in the middle of battle, too. Uh, it's it's uh, the shonen I- ideology talk, right? Yeah, you have, have your... The conversations mid... They have a conversation... Not even just during battle. They have a conversation during actions in battle. Like, I'm about to do this thing, but I'm going to talk to you first. I'm going to punch you. I'm just going to explain to you that I'm going to punch you first. It's always the villain. Yeah. Yeah. It's always the villain. <laughs> yeah, it, hap- it happens here and there. I mean, going to get admit- you with my evil mochi power because you can't beat me. And I'm going to explain to you why you can't beat me. And then I there's need, Luffy yeah. just breathing heavily and bleeding profusely. <gasps> no, you know what? How I about no? Ah! <laughs> I need more. I need more of like. I need more of the. When that happens, give me the Ixion Saga DT fucking treatment, which is a show that probably nobody's heard of. But give me that. I want that. I want somebody to go like, I'm gonna, fuck, I'm gonna murder you in one hit. Let me just power up my ultimate move. It's gonna take about five minutes to power up. Main guy just walks up and kicks the dude in the balls like yeah. Well, that's one uh, punch man, right? Uh, it's <laughs> Black Black Lagoon, the, the the Nazi. So yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Logan, what? Yeah. What? Logan. Are you afraid? Of course you are. Now witness the awesome power of my amazing. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta shoot me or sell me the damn thing. <laughs> uh. Oh man. All right, let's get it. Let's get into a show with awful pacing. I'm gonna play this drop. All right, go for it. All right, uh, yeah, I'm gonna play the Devil Man. This is bullshit drop. <laughs> Real, this is bullshit. Okay, open the door and let's take a swing at the motherfuckers. It's funny how I got the drop to just end at the mother. <laughs> yes. All right. Witch Hunter Robin, Studio Sunrise, Director Shuko Murase. 
from other fame as Gangsta, which got canceled. Ergo Proxy, which is my favorite. Uh, the show anime. was released. Yeah, it has the horrible show base re- as well, but it has a yeah. story. <laughs> released in summer 2002, it's an original anime story, not based on a manga, manhwa, or webtoon. Uh, summary taken from Anime Planet. The STNJ is a secret organization charged with capturing witches of all ages who misuse their innate ability of the craft. Its newest recruit is a young girl named Robin who wields the same power that she is helping to control. While skillful at their ability to detain quickly, the number of witches keeps seeming to increase and the misuse of power grows stronger, casting a shadow of doubt as to what is really going on. For the ST... uh, Nothing. For the (laughs) STNJ, there is much work ahead, and for Robin, her troubles are just beginning. (laughs) Dun-dun-dun! Yeah, it's not that uh, that, uh, exciting. No, not really. So so this show... Yeah, yeah, that's much better. (laughs) This is a great example of a show with awful pacing. (laughs) What? No. Yeah. Atrocious, one might say. Point out one good thing about the challenge. You know, I, I'm not even. I'm not even. Like, I'm just going to be straight up honest. I finished this show. um, Yeah, yesterday, actually. Me too. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) You know what's kind of incredible? I'm trying to think back to the beginning of this show, and I'm just like, what the fuck actually happened? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember. The show three days, but it was the third yeah, time I've watched it. You're insane. It. Why do you watch it so many times? Because I've watched it one time, then I've watched it a second time because I didn't remember yeah. what happened, and all the third time for the podcast. But of course you didn't remember what happened. I'm sure you still don't remember what happened. No, I remember what happened, and I remember why I decided to forget this. Because the whole premise is, like, you, you watch it, it, nothing happens. When something happens, is the show explaining that the STN doesn't have it a purpose? Because you have the STN, you have the, the Japanese branch of the thing called Solomon, and you have the HQ agents in Japan. They also explain there's witches which are the people with power, and you have the seeds, which are the descendants of witches, and might, you know, awaken some power. But the Japanese branch, which is not the STNJ, keeps tabs on all those seeds. If they see the awakening power, they would just get inside of their house and kill them. So technically, there shouldn't be any witches awakening Meaning there should be an, any any witches to the S, SNTG to, to, to hunt. Because the Japanese branch already does that. When they... yeah, well, listen. When, when you have this show, right? There is a lot of, there's a lot of inconsistencies that just doesn't add up. Yeah, no. I mean, that, but... is, that is the major one I, I've, I've saw. No, I know, I know, I know. But there, there's not. But it's literally, like, we're talking about how poor, like, the poor pacing... But in general, there's a lot of stuff that does... Like JD mentioned, the music. right? The music is the most uninspired piece of fucking anime I've seen. I think I've heard in a long time. Hey, hey. And it's just like, how what do, how, what do we do to, for music in the background? I don't know. Play something. And that's, that's literally the feeling I get. You have the character designs. The character designs are fucking horrid. Not just because they are... Not just because they're poorly drawn. No, no, no. You know absolutely nothing about any character... Uh, from what they from what they look like, because they're pretty much all wearing the same shit. All I remember of them is their fucking grayish, black, brownish kind of <laughs> kind of coat and the gloves they're wearing. That's yeah. literally the character them. design. They have no yeah. personality. They speak with absolutely no conviction. It's so fucking monotonous. The backgrounds <laughs> are horrid. And by the way, for the longest time, I couldn't even figure out what the fuck this setting is. Because I thought it was Japan, until I realized that Robin is from Italy, and it's like, is this Europe? No, it is actually Japan, but the fucking is background... Is it in the sure 1920s? Because is... everyone's the f- almost dressed like that. Oh, yeah, but no, but it's the fucking day. background <laughs> does not look like Japan, and I'm just like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> the the character designs look like something from the eighties. You have the the leather jacket, the leather 80s. jacket, yeah, the leather <laughs> jacket. Something that would come from that that anime. No one watched, like no one <laughs> listened to the podcast, right? Angel, Angel, Angel Cop. Cop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> because seriously, you have the the uh, the long leather jackets with the shoulder pads, the sideburns, you know, <laughs> small eyes. You can't even see the drawings. But yeah. Uh, you gotta love know. characters in the background without a face. They're just a blob, an amorphous blob oh. in the back with their same coat. So you're like, yeah, I don't know who's in the background, but they're talking to him. Not even <laughs> just in the background. I love the fact that you see the fucking screenshot I posted of Robin when it's just like they're in the garage. She just turns around and her face is just... They attempted to draw her face, kinda, <laughs> but it's not her face. And I'm, I'm just sitting here, like, how? Why would you do that? She's not even in the background. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I understand that scaling down is hard, but you don't even have to scale it down that much. They're just like, nah, fuck it. Dots and a fucking squiggly mouth. <laughs> yeah. Man, the right, character care. designs, <laughs> fucking hacker guy with a mullet and <laughs> color. <laughs> <laughs> like color red lens glasses oh my god and a and a, and a, and a chain with a <laughs> big lock oh as a god. necklace it's like is this the 80s <laughs> yes yes it is uh, Not, there, yeah. there's so oh my god there's just there's so much with this show that just doesn't fucking it does not fucking it doesn't work. add up like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this was something I noticed throughout the whole series because I got so bored watching it. I had to somehow entertain myself with other things in the show that, of course, had no purpose on anything. Okay, uh, do you guys remember the tiny little troll-looking Japanese dude in the STNJ office? Uh, the guy works. with the Hitler mustache? Did he have the a boss. Hitler mustache? The, the bald one? No, it's not. No, 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 it's not him, not him. Uh... He's he, he he's kind of like uh, the character out of Lord of the Rings, uh, who's obsessed with the ring. Um, Boromir? No, no, no. The uh, no, the, my Smeagol? precious character. Yeah, Smeagol. He looks <laughs> like Smeagol. Anyways, uh, he serves no purpose in the entire show other than when someone walks by him, he'll turn around in his chair, he'll cock his head to the left. And then he'll smile. Oh, oh, I think I remember now. <laughs> yeah, That's his really. whole purpose in the entire show. I, so. I watch this character. I'm like, okay, is he going to say something this time? Is he going to have a smite remark? Is he... Are we even going to know his name? Maybe they told us his name and I don't remember. Maybe they talked at him. Because I, I don't recall this character ever saying a single word other than just turns in his chair, cocks his head left, and then smiles. I don't, I don't remember. I don't even remember that guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like I thought he was going to be a surprise villain or something, but oh, nope. No. I I I'll have pretty to much watch cold... that. <laughs> I'll yeah. have to rewatch that. I pretty much cold what the fuck. The... I pretty much cold of what the fuck was going to happen with the characters. Like I think I probably mean, the most the most upsetting thing thing... is the fact that one of the things that could have been that kind of could have been interesting because as you learn later on in the show, there is a there is a spy amongst the uh, the STNJ. And Ooh. I'm just sitting there. And even before they've given us any information, I just take one look at the characters. And I go, you know what? I am pretty fucking sure. If I was writing this, I would have fucking had Eureka. Eureka Dojima be the, uh, be the fucking spy. And fucking yeah, she is. And does it matter that she's a spy in the end? No, no. it does not matter. Yeah. It makes no difference. I'm just like, oh my god. I mean, yeah. one, thing, one thing I got to distract myself was uh, if... Trying to remember if the gatekeeper would give a fuck to whatever's going on, because like he's <laughs> I mean, always outside, thing. he's always outside, always reading the newspaper, and shit is going down. People are invading the place and shooting people down, and, and I mean, you he know, got shot. Guy, they got the shot in like, the legs. <laughs> yeah, but like, oh, you know, uh, you you better re register those police officers because they don't want you to change. Like, uh, keep switching off the the security. You know, because they are trying to evade this place, and there's the gatekeeper just sitting down. <laughs> sitting, See, sitting Hickey, you did what I did. You picked uh, out a character, and you're like, I wonder if anything's going to happen with this one one guy. Because they, they've really made it clear 
to but it did. show this shot. person over and over. Yeah, he got shot. <laughs> whoop de do. doo would, that, no, By the way, he, speaking he of, to... can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that this man got shot in his legs? And I mean clearly shot in his legs. He started fucking bleeding and everything. Literally the next day, he's on his feet, feet again and he's perfectly fine. Why? Because they were apparently shot with rubber bullets. Fucking rubber bullets my ass. That man got shot through counts. both his legs. <laughs> and he's fine. That's not that's yeah, no I fucking mean, rubber if, bullet. If after after the, the invader place, the other hunter, the the teenager looking sassy guy, got shot in the in the uh, in the shoulder and start bleeding as well. Yep. But no, they're rub <laughs> they're rubber bullets and, and they uh they, they come across like air pellets. Pew. Yeah. Yeah, pew, really. Pew. Making fucking holes in the wall and shit. Yep, rubber bullets. <laughs> yeah, we're just we're, we're just no, tranking the, them, the knocking part, them out. <laughs> the best part about the the sassy guy is that he got shot in the the shoulder. It got it it gets like clean through, starts bleeding. In the next episode, it's like, oh, he got shot in the leg and it broke. I'm like, excuse me. Yeah, he broke his <laughs> leg. It's like I no. I think, Why? I think in that case, they mixed up who got shot where. <laughs> the Probably. <animators>. Probably. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of this in the show. N never you mind that the first 13 episodes is a catch witch of the week, which oh, yeah. has zero bearing towards really anything in the story, because you get no character development. You don't get to know any of the other characters. You get no plot development. Uh... I mean, if you can even call anything plot development in the show. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean it, what's, it the, what's the one thing we learned it's, from it's the first very, half? It, it's a very the, shitty purpose, uh, purpose but it, it has. It, it, it is there. It is. But like, you didn't the, need 13 episodes learn? for it. No, you did No, but like, did what do you learn in the, first, in the first half? We learned that there's been another witch before, or another hunter, at least. I'm pretty right. sure I said it was a witch. Before Robin. And now Robin is there to replace her. Uh, okay, cool. And also, you get to learn that they're kind of suspicious that Amon might have been the one who hunted her. And other than that, enjoy. Watch them hunt witches. It's it's really interesting, because what's going to happen is they're going to attempt to corner the witch, they're going to fail, and then Robin is going to show up and she's going to attempt to use her ability and fail, because she can't control her fucking ability, because apparently she needs glasses. But she refuses to accept that she needs to wear glasses, because she's like, my vision isn't that bad. But what the fuck does that matter when your vision goes bad when you use your power anyways? The fucking use your goddamn glasses. Use your because granny this, glasses and suck yeah, it up, bitch. Because this show definitely needed a mega, ne? And, uh, yeah. There you go. First half. The first, Enjoy. yeah. Yeah, that. The first half. That was. Uh, no. Yeah, I was gonna can, say. Yeah, I was gonna say with Robin, it really bugged me that they never, in the beginning, never clearly established just how adept she is with her powers. I feel like they were trying to give her an air of mystery, but that sort of thing was is best reserved for characters that I have think, been established yeah. to be skilled and powerful, yet they're trying to tell us that she's a rank amateur. Rank A. It's like, it's hard to root for the underdog when we don't know thing one about the underdog. Oh, we yeah. We don't know thing one the, about the any of them. You are rank A, <laughs> you could be a rank S. Wow. <laughs> nice. Such an underdog. Yeah, no, but like, <laughs> it's because the character, de <laughs> the character development. I love he, that underdog LeBron James it. every every year in the NV NBA. Oh, yeah, You're like, will it. he get to the finals this year? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> underdog. <laughs> yeah, he always he's always in the finals. Will he win? I don't know. Underdog. <laughs> it's like we, uh, good you mentioned that because the character development or characters in in general are fucking awful as well. They did so. They didn't try. They didn't try whoever, to establish anything. Whoever wrote this thing mistook character development to character discovery. Character development is when a character develops. It changes yeah. its you personality. Don't say. Right? <laughs> like, it's pretty obvious. A character discovery is well, it is already established. You just discover it because they mention or, you know, someone mentioned it. Uh, usually you can see that with war veterans you don't know the guy is a war veteran he's just like this salty guy and as the character as as it progresses you discover why he's like that he didn't develop you just discovered information from him right yeah robin they, never develops we just discover they she's mistook, a test child no he, she <laughs> developed but like the, they mistook it so her development 
it what it should be a discovery it, it becomes a development so she should be, be like this awesome hunter from italy but she doesn't know basic information about hunting witches she doesn't yeah. even know basic information about crime scene investigation like every time they get to a fucking crime scene it's like don't Burn touch anything down. touches everything yeah, said, don't yeah. touch anything why why should i not touch stuff why can I not because just go and pick stuff off a crime scene? Why can I not just take this thing that seems interesting to me and then not tell anybody and then bring it back to the office and be like, this thing was at the oh, yeah, crime scene and crime everybody's scene. like, why? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you dumb? <laughs> yeah. Why, why are, are you, you running? Dumb? <laughs> yeah. Why are you here? You can't control your powers. You have no... You have no training whatsoever you have no personality you live in a fucking jail cell for some reason <laughs> yeah like, because they, they oh. mistook, like they mistook what is character development and character discovery so <laughs> they didn't attempt any they didn't i would i refuse to accept that they didn't attempt to do anything with any of the characters they fucking just went yeah these are all mysterious people and then they decided yeah that's good enough Fair enough. We don't need to know anything now. Just have these people act really cool and really monotone, and then eventually stuff is going to happen, and everybody's going to be like, "I wonder who's. I wonder who's the fucking guy on the inside. I wonder is Armand going to kill Robin? Is anybody else out to stop us? Oh my is god! I, I got to talk Solomon, about that scene. Is Solomon corrupt? Is headquarters corrupt? What's happening here? I love all, I love all of these the reveals. Story. Doesn't give a shit. It's like no, no, no. I don't even know what they were doing. I was at some point, like at some point, they were they, fighting they Solomon. Gave up, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were okay, fighting here. Solomon, kinda, but not really. But then they did, and then they got the information. They were like, "Now we can stop him." And then they didn't do anything. And then they came at it in at the end and be like, "Yep, we're the heroes here. We did this." <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I love all. I love all of the reveals because they all reveal in the exact same manner. Like, okay, let's take uh, Almon. Uh, the the guy who possibly hunted the the witch prior, Robin. Ah, Amon's gonna hunt her. Everyone thinks he's gonna do it. She's in trouble. She's on the run. Cuts to like a random train she's on. She looks left. Ah, there's Amon. Hey, how you doing? You're not gonna kill me. <laughs> no. Oh, that. All right, yeah, cool. No, that's that, that's uh, that's one of those hallucination scenes. That's, I love, what, that's a fucking I love dream like, she wakes up from. <laughs> Solomon decided you were a witch. What does that even mean? <laughs> Five episodes I mean, of that. Five episodes of fucking... what does it fucking mean? Like, but every oh, hunter yeah. is a witch. It's like, what does it even mean? It's like, but that was the mean? reveal. It was her. It was her stupid dream. And then the next time we see him, she goes, "I had a dream that you weren't going to kill me." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> good talk. He didn't. He didn't, <laughs> he I mean, didn't like, kill her. <laughs> it's. And it's, it's the same thing, like, when we finally get to that moment, remember that wit that original witch who was hunted? Remember when Robin just finally decides to be, be like, you know what, fuck it, what we got to lose? Let me ask him. So, uh, Amon, did you hunt the previous witch? Yep, sure did. Great, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, it's uh, all right. When, when she gave, like, the, the secret of uh, magic, is that the name of, of English? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, secret of magic. Because I, I've watched it with craft, uh, they called it, but yeah. Yeah. Secret of the Craft, I think uh, it was. Yeah. Oh, Secret of the Craft, okay. Uh, when when she unveils the secret and it's like, oh, it's inside of me all along. And it's oh. like, nothing changed. Like, honestly, she she still thought, <laughs> like, she still thought it was the, the, the object. So, like, mm -hmm. it gets, like, the, the father from Italy goes to, to do the exorcism in Japan. And he's like, oh, yeah. it seems like you got taste for magic. I'm like, no, she didn't. <laughs> what, does, what does that even mean? And now, now she's she's being kind of hunted. I'm like, why? What, oh, what, I love what, these what? other fucking... I love these other, like, pro fucking hunters that come, that come out to take her. It's like, oh, I'm such a danger. And then it's like, fucking... The, the I mean, psychic the, wars. the first guy... <laughs> yeah, no, the first guy who shows up, I don't even remember his fucking name, I don't care. Uh, he fucking, like the fucking top hat guy, Sastry, the fucking Sastry, origami Sastry, dude. Something like that. Sastry, Sastry. yeah, sure, whatever. He fucking shows up, he is the most <laughs> dangerous guy, because at least he fucking kills a bunch of witches before he gets to Robin and then gets absolutely annihilated. But then everybody else, after that, it's just like, fucking Earth guy, waste of fucking time. It's like, I don't... Yeah, I, the, I like the, really this is the best every, everyone... this is the fucking best you have to come that Solomon has to come with these guys yeah I, I love Sasuke okay. because like 
everyone is so dark and always wearing brown and gray and you know very monotonous yeah. and suddenly there's this guy straight out of three musketeers <laughs> appear <laughs> and it's like i think i think you are from the the wrong series the the, the ghibli <laughs> studio is right next door <laughs> it took a wrong turn uh, <laughs> yeah that's uh, yeah all this talk of like lack of reaction to stuff it's at its worst when when robin straight up incinerates a guy for the first time and all the only oh. reaction we get is a single tear down her cheek it's like oh robin just incinerated someone Sucks, I guess. Literally, when that <laughs> happened, I was fucking convinced that he just teleported out or something. I'm like, oh, I'm sure he has. I'm sure he must have had some sort of ability to, to disappear. And then it's like, oh, wait, you killed them? Yeah. Wait, it's like, killed them? The funny what? thing is, if she if she used so ma- so much power to generate a such a strong fire to in- instantly incinerate someone, the guy next to him, which was like, her friend should have him skin boiled and just melted down his face, but that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no impact to the moment <laughs> at all. Yeah, also, there's, by there's, the way, absolutely nothing. I swear. Also, after inconsistency, a po- inconsistency with witchcraft, because sometimes you see oh. like circles in the ground and like the the powdery thing. Yeah. And even oh, when that, that... when yeah. when she first appears. She was like, "Oh, I changed it, the the element in the ground and the in the fucking circle, the ma- the magecraft circle." Uh, never talks about it again. <laughs> like, no, okay. never. Yeah. Also, you want the fucking the craft abilities at the end were just fucking. Everybody went from having some sort of different ability back in the very original, like with witch hunter part, where it's just like everybody had a different kind of ability of some sort, whether it was like instilling fear in people, controlling locusts, whatever. At the end, everyone had the same fucking power. It was either A, I can control the air, or I can control some other element, or it was the ability to fucking, like, I don't know, I don't even know, the, the fucking force from Star Wars, where I can pick <laughs> shit up or throw it at you, or throw pick you up and throw you without touching you. Everyone had that ability at the end. It's like, okay, sure, I guess we're just ran out of ideas. Yeah, no. yeah, it's okay, Tori. They all have guns, so it's, it's they're yeah. dead anyways. They all have guns <laughs> with witch soup. Witch, witch soup. Yeah. Soup. We, we get... Um. All right. So just just some just some other things that the the uh, the show did absolutely horribly. Uh, the music was awful. It was. Uh, I swear that same piano riff happened any time no action was occurring. So you would constantly get characters standing up against a wall talking not at the other characters in the room just at the ground because their heads got to be tilted because they're so cool uh <laughs> cool and mysterious yeah the the piano riff is going on <laughs> just the slow one so you you're already bored in that sense they're talking about literally nothing that you haven't heard already before so no new information is being given to you and don't forget uh, they keep repeating the other characters dialogue back to them constantly yes, oh, yeah. yes. major exactly. pet peeve of mine with with anime of the time (laughs) so you get that uh the massive uh reveals were horrible because there's just no character reaction now uh just question what language did uh, you guys watch this in because i switched between the japanese dub and the english dub obviously japanese fuck the english dub okay i did english dub all the way i watched it in japanese with Portuguese subs. Okay. So it was fun the... because the the translator was putting his notes and it was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds actually more entertaining. Uh, the uh, Japanese and English dubs were both incredibly monotone and boring. Yep. The English even more so just because it's my native language. So it came across twice as boring. <laughs> yep. I don't think there's a single moment where Robin's voice breaks an octave. It does not. She's she's always uh, let's take uh, when she goes randomly into the the couples because she has her uh, her burnt rag (laughs) that they call the 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 fragment of wisdom or whatever they fucking (laughs) call it. Here's my burnt rag. I hear you're experts. I don't know what it is. Cool. I'll come back tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) It it is right when you discover the the SDNG doesn't serve anything. Right, uh, <laughs> and yeah. she goes, "Oh, so, uh, the 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 secret of magecraft is inside of me all along." 
So yeah, <laughs> I didn't need the, the born rag. I'm just that powerful. Like okay. And then you discover that everything was episodes. bullshit because she was genetically engineered to be a new race of human being. It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> Uncle <Uncward> smile. <Yeah. laughs> I'm gonna. Oh, what, a, what, a, to what a fun reveal, too. Remember the <laughs> fucking 300 year or three, 400 year old witch who was like fucking creating new witches so that she could finally get killed? That was a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this all all of this random bitching about the show and how bad it is all culminates with uh, them going to head director guy. They go into his basement. They call it the factory. And there's all the witches that they've caught. But you only see, like, you don't even see them, actually. They just nope, show a tube up. You don't even see one. You don't even see one. So they could have just said all the they, those are all witches. They censored it. Yeah. Yep. For some reason. Uh, they're probably this. naked, Hickey God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, got, they, they gotta get so all of this green soup that they wear around their necks to negate witch attacks. Uh, which all their entire explanation is: I have this green soup on my neck. Yeah, I mean, your power you know, doesn't you work. You know that That's the, it. the HQ. Also, it took me so long. <laughs> like even the first time I've watched it, it took me so long to realize the HQ was also Solomon. Solomon yeah. was the organization. I thought there was like three organizations. Yeah, the you Solomon, thought it was separate entities. Solomon HQ and Japanese branch. I'm like, okay, yep, yep. Japanese branch is the Japanese branch of the HQ. So who is Solomon? <laughs> then in the second Same. the second time I watched it, I realized it was like, oh, yeah. Solomon because is Because there's HQ. infighting okay. going on, and they don't agree who should leave yeah, the yeah. organization, and they don't. That's Solomon, like, yeah. Solomon doesn't, doesn't doesn't like, Solomon doesn't like the o- Oros, which is the green yeah. soup, because... Well, I thought it was the some... Orb- Orbus. Yes, Orbus. Yeah, Orbus. 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 I thought it was Orbo, but whatever. Whatever. Yeah, who, ca- who cares? Who cares? What is the it's name? green soup. What is the name <laughs> yeah. of the green little... Tea, it's right. the Imagine Breaker. The Imagine Breaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's way less effective. You know, yes. that is... That is not far off. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, the the Orbos has a secret they don't know about. Even though they have this amazing structure and obviously intelligence sections inside of the HQ, they don't know what the Orbos do, does. And they explain it's like, oh, the person loses its mind, but you've never seen someone losing the mind. You just oh, we see... did see one. No, the, the fucking, I mean, they just... The soldier dude who fucking just goes some... Go some... Insane I mean, did, inside of did, the van and start fucking. Didn't they just scream and faint? No, he started screaming and he started fighting, so they fucking chucked him out of the fucking van and shot him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> mostly mostly it was like someone <laughs> screaming, like liquid go, goes black and they scream and faint. Yeah. The guys so it's revealed that shot. they make the green soup from witches that they caught. Oh, shock horror! Say it ain't so! And when it's revealed, I th- I think we saw one character put their hand over their mouth, and that was... Everyone else just stands still and looks at it, and they go, cool, that sucks. No, 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 no. Robin was very upset. She said so. Oh, oh, right, right. She goes, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or whatever. She, look, there was, there was some character development, because she not only said she was sad, but she also frowned. <laughs> yeah. well, oh, dude! Ah, she I, showed she showed a minute amount of emotion. Can, what character guys, development? Guys, hey, remember look, how she eventually that, learns that when she learns of the witches, she decides she is like, "Oh, I am. I should probably. This is really bad. I can't believe the horrors I have committed against these uh, these witches. I against my own kind." And then when they leave that fucking factory again, when everything is collapsing, she's just like, "Ah, fuck it. They're in my. They're fucking. Uh, they're responsible for this fucking breakdown. Let me kill them all." <laughs> no, I think it was she. She did it on. I mean, it doesn't make sense because they would die anyway. But like, she did on, on <laughs> mercy. Because like, who knows? She didn't say anything. The, because yeah. she says like, just oh, she, they, to be they like... are suffering, and then she just puts fire on everyone. I'm like, that. I, I, I'm like, oh, she's doing oh, that. Oh, she said they were cry. She said they were crying. Yeah, were and I'm crying. like, oh, like, she's oh. doing that to they look, a. They look pretty kill asleep them, to me. Like, yeah, like a kill them with mercy. <laughs> B, stop the fucking self-destruction. No, no. the self-destruction <laughs> didn't deactivate activ- it anyway. I'm like, okay, cool. Why do you Why do you make a system where the fucking people you're making soup of can interfere within using their mind? 
because that's logic. No, but I mean, <laughs> did you see? <laughs> not even, not even that. It's like, and then they add this just to fucking completely piss me off. They add this pointless little detail at the end where everybody gets out except for Robin and Amon because oh, they died. Obviously, they didn't die. And it's like the fucking dude, and the, fucking the fucking Amon's brother the fucking, walked up and he's like, "They are dude. definitely not dead." How dude, do you know? The, that, I just that do. epilogue. That epilogue. <laughs> That epilogue with the fucking hacker dude with his mullet and color red lens glasses with a 90s happy music behind just saying, Hi, I'm the hacker dude. I survived the explosion because I wasn't even there. Uh, yeah, I'm on in the, the records say they died, but I don't believe it. It's like, uh, okay, <laughs> cool, I guess. Oh man, that's fantastic. And you have you have the horrible. gatekeeper just there doing the same thing, like oh, just hanging I'm, out. Yeah, <laughs> my my computer guy never ended up moving. He just turns around in his chair. Uh, so the la- the last little bit reveal is of course the witch soup, and then the director that wants to make the super witch soup, so he doesn't need to use witches anymore. Like this is the most purest kind, Robin. I will kill you. And he, she tries the to use the magic power. It just goes around him because he has his soup gun with the most powerful soup and then he shoots it at her and then she just burns it yes. cool yeah yeah no, because and then know, he it's... he says and then he says some lines of ah i failed this sucks and he leaves and blows up with the factory factory blows up everyone everyone escapes no problem except the director uh and then we just assume robin and almon are okay because of course <laughs> Oh, we, we just know, know. They're okay. We know <laughs> they're okay. The guy said so, and then we see Robin at the end as well. But I mean, for fun's sake, like they scared there's so many, there's so many dumb shit. Clearly, like, Amon again, wanted to fuck Robin, but she was a wiggle at the time. I know, right? No, <laughs> but like time. even even fucking, we're seeing like the kind, all the reveals in this one is fucking pathetic. Like the same thing, like I said earlier, when we figure out that one of the people worked for the SDNJ, uh, Yurika Dojima. When she finally reveals that fact that I realized really so fucking uh, early on that she is a spy, like it's like I I'm a spy. That kind of gets mixed up there in the ending as well when she comes out as a spy. And then what's the uh, what's the consequence? Well, I mean, we are led to believe that she is responsible for the first kind of uh, attempt on Robin's life, and then after that, nothing. Cool. D- doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She is a spy. So what? Who cares? <laughs> Cool. Power of friendship. Yeah, because like time, I guess know? I guess they realized the HQ wasn't doing anything wrong. The HQ they, wasn't they, doing anything. They never but explained just, just why they wanted to hunt Robin though. Because she was getting they they say they said she was dangerous. They thought she would be dangerous. <laughs> I guess. It does make sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it doesn't make much. I mean, they explain like a witch is whatever Solomon says it is. Yeah. And it ends with, what does that even mean? They try to kill them you know, twice and then just give up. <laughs> yep. Oh, and then I, fuck, I forgot about, uh, I also forgot about that whole reveal with uh, with Amon when it's just like, why he's so weird? And then around witches in particular, and it's just like, oh yeah, remember when we lost our mother or our parents, I guess? It was both of them. I don't remember if their dad is still alive. I fucking, whatever. Anyways, when his mother just fucking gained witch power that apparently... Got hunted, I guess, I yeah. assume. It's like, ah, oh, that's why I hate witches. Oh, cool. Cool. All right, cool. <laughs> so is this going to have a, have a significant impact on your character? No. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to wrap this up. We're, just, we're running around circles uh, at this point. Uh, I hated the show. It was incredibly boring. It was one of the worst shows we've ever watched for the podcast. Uh, nothing about this was salvageable to me. I didn't like the character designs. They were bland. Uh, the music was bland and repetitive. Uh, there were worthless characters in the show. There was no character development. Uh, the art was bad. Uh, Sunrise, since this isn't a mech show, of course it's bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Robin is a bad character, if you can even call her that. Uh, you you could literally put green soup on the screen and call it Robin. It would have been probably <laughs> just as good. Uh, so, uh, this will get the same score as another anime we reviewed from the summer of 2002. Uh, it gets a 2 out of 10 from me. Who's next? 
Anybody? All right. So there's nothing to talk about. It is, well, it it moves and has sound. So I'll give it a three. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's good enough. <laughs> it is uh, almost, almost. It was an attempt. Yeah, good enough. <laughs> Moves and adds sound. Three. <laughs> Love it. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. It's it's a bad show. Shocking. Shock horror. People like this show. A which lot. Is the weird part. Yeah, which is the weird part. Who is this um, audience for? I don't know. People oh man, who like shit. Hot Robin has almost seven fifty on my enemy list. Good luck, oh, JD. 7. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Good luck with the uh, with the email, JD. You're gonna need it. It's it, it's it's a it's it, it's a product of his time and a bad product of his time. But anyways, yeah, no, it's the it's product just, of it's no a time. Show. I. Uh, <laughs> The best thing I can say about this show is the fact that Amon has the same name as the as the devil who uh, the demon who possesses Akira Fudo and Devil Man. So I guess that's a positive. Oh my god. He has, <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he, it has the same name of a more interesting character. Okay, his cool. Brother is um, probably the best character. The whole thing that is also a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, because he actually has some sort of personality and you know but uh, and, you know, he he chases women, which makes him Immediately, something. Anyways, yeah, I agree with you. This is a fucking 3 out of 10. Yeah, so a lot of my criticisms are the same as you guys, although I will admit that that gothic dress, uh, t- floor-length trench coat combo that Robin sometimes wears does look kind of cool. <laughs> you know what it looks the br- cool? The brownish red? No, Cyclism. No, no, no. Cyclism. Yeah, the color is not what's important here. <laughs> Cyclism clothing Robin. With... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where she gets to suck it, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what is what is weird about that outfit? How does that hair style of her fit inside of the helmet? Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> I Don't never worry thought about of that. <laughs> oh man, she's got literal handlebars on her head. <laughs> I can ride my bike with no handlebars. <laughs> And I hate myself for doing that. We can end it now. <laughs> we need yeah, Colin's score, and then we can. I know. Uh, and to get add here. something a little, to add to what you guys have said, this also has one of the lamest openings and endings of any anime I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it's but very considering what the show is like, it's kind of appropriate. <laughs> it is. I've read reviews that say the musical score of this anime is awesome. The opening is interesting. I'm like, that's not nah, whatever. The opening it looks, is bland. It looks like a, it looks like a two thousand two, music clip, from a yeah. gothic <laughs> band. At least the opening. I don't remember the ending. I skipped. I never watched the ending. As soon as the episode is over, I'm like, thank God, next. <laughs> I would go so far. Which, as by the way, the fun ama- the Funimation. Yes. The Funimation site. Uh, doesn't have the um, the next option. It doesn't work. Oh no! Right. So that was that was painful. Anyways, Colin, what's your score? Eh, three out of ten. Screaming threes and a two from me. I had a three originally, and then I went, "No, you know what? This show's worse than that." <laughs> <laughs> the underdog. So, the underdog. <laughs> All right, so uh, much much better episode uh, coming up, or m- much better show came on, coming up on the next episode. We got Space Pirate Captain Harlock, uh, and our main topic is going to be the fallen and forgotten of the decade past. So how about what? that? That'll be a fun Yay. one. Instead of doing like best of the decade or worst of the decade, we're doing the fallen and forgotten shows. I guess Hickey, uh, this was your idea. Uh, I guess it's the shows that. Don't get talked about very much. Yeah, shows we when we watched, it, we thought it was really cool and really deserved the spotlight. But for some reason, you don't. We don't have any reason to talk about. We don't know anyone who to recommend to. It's just not that memorable, you know. Those kind of shows where you just yeah. wake up one day and remember it is like, oh yeah, I I watched that show ten years ago and it was really cool. 
I don't know why I, I don't. I never talk running. about it. And <laughs> as you go into the bathroom, take a piss, you forget about it already. So those kind of shows. <laughs> as awesome. something more important came up, yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. But it's still worth watching. <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, Witch Hunter Robin has taken the place of the worst anime uh, we've ever reviewed for the podcast. Wow, well, we Which, yeah. Angel Cop. Damn. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I think I think it has a lower score than Angel Cop by by a by a lot. I think yeah. Stainless Night technically beats out <laughs> Witch All Hunter right. Robin. <laughs> Come on, of course it does. Yeah. yeah. At least, at least it's porn. Yeah. <laughs> kinda, kinda. <laughs> depends what depends how your feet how you feel about birch trees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this was episode sixty five of the Red Leaf Retrocast. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye, Bye. now.